Hey, welcome back to Survival Preparedness for Beginners. And this is another little question and answer type situation here. So stick with me here, all right? Hear me through. Now this one here was a good one. And this is on when I did a video on how to store rice long term the right way. Now Val Perry, he answered and he uh, commented and he said, I'm going to read the whole thing because it had a lot of good information in it for a lot of people out there. He says, I'm not going to say which method is better, but I'll share how I do it. And that's what I like is when people share how they do things. This way here other people get some other ideas. I use a five gallon bucket with mylar bags with oxygen absorbers method for storage, mostly rice and beans for long term storage. I found that some vacuum seal bags after years may have broken seal. So I store the majority of long food storage in five gallon mylar bags and don't worry much about it after that. A short term one to two year storage that I constantly rotate could also be used with rice and beans but usually of better quality. I will vacuum seal in place in five gallon buckets with gamma seal lid. Even if I seal it with a compromise, one to two years will not spoil it. So my kitchen pantry is in jars with dried sealed method that will last one to three months. Vacuum seal bed in buckets I rotate each one to two years and long term storage for 20 years are in my Mylar bags. So as you can see here, he covered a lot of the different basic things that you can do and which is really nice. Um, if you're going to, um, I'm not a big person on the five gallon buckets with the Marlar bags. Now I've done videos on that and I've stated that. Um, the only way that I would say that I would do that is if, like he said, if you're going to store for long term, you're never gonna open it unless it is an absolute positively emergency and you have to open that product up for your rice and beans and um, uh, flour and that type of stuff, you know, definitely store it into a, a bucket, a food grade bucket and put it in a Marlar bag and make sure that you put in the proper, you know, oxygen absorbers in there and then you can seal it up, put it in a closet or something and hopefully at that point, you know, you don't have to touch it and it's going to last you for 20 years and then if something happens, you can open it up and you're good to go. I like the idea of storing things into smaller quantities and rotating those things through. Uh, this way here, you know, you've got a constant rotation of supplies and, you know, it's easier and less, um, so you're not opening, you know, a 25 pound bag of rice because you need to take, you know, 10 cups out of it or whatever to fill your container in your kitchen. You know, so if you already have it like pre-measured, into your uh, vacuum seal bags or even your mylar bags uh, for that matter you know you can just take open that up and then you can use that product and you keep rotating your stock while your five gallon buckets stay nice and secure in a nice cool dry place and this way here you do have a, a nice emergency backup that is stored and ready to go in a moment's notice but that will also, if you don't touch it and you keep it stored properly, it's going to last you 20 years plus. You know, so that is a good thing to do. Um, I do know people that use the canning jars and they do take and, uh, uh, you know, store some of their dry goods and stuff in that, like in their cabinets in their kitchen. Um, if you have a vacuum sealer that actually has the vacuum uh, attachment that goes with it, uh, you can very easily do that. Go to the store, pick you up some canning jars and voila, that would be a great, um, you know, another way of storing your product right in your cupboards that you can open and use on a daily basis if you have to. It takes a matter of a few seconds to reseal the jar. Um, you know, some of your plastic containers, you want to make sure that if you're getting those, you want to get good um, plastic containers. You know, the ones you buy at Walmart, they come in a box and you're getting you know 50 of them um, those really don't seal that well so uh, that's really not a way to go um, anyways you should take and really um, do some research on your plastic containers 
Uh, Lock and Lid makes some really good containers. Yes, they are on a little bit on the expensive side, but they seal very well. Um, they have a very good seal on them. Keep, if you're gonna put it in the dishwasher, I wouldn't put, put it in a dishwasher because the heat tends to warp it a little bit, so then it's really tough to get the lid and stuff on. But you could take and turn around and what you could do in that point is just wash, you know, right in the sink with soap and water and then put it in the strainer and let it dry and you won't have to worry about that. But Lock and Lid has some really good containers in a lot of different sizes and styles. So that would be a really good way for somebody to go if you didn't have some way to use a canning jar to reseal it. So I just wanted to bring this up because he had a really good comment and I wanted to make sure, like I said, you know, you know, some people don't read the comments and stuff. Uh, I wanted everybody to really see that. So this one here was on, uh, you know, how to store the rice, you know, long term. And uh, thank you, uh, Val, for putting that comment out there. I really do appreciate it because it was very in depth. And I think that uh, a lot of people, if they they read that comment, it would give them a lot of great ideas on watching, you know. Uh, some of the YouTube videos that are out there are mine. There's quite a few people that do quite a few different videos, um, but this really helps people out, and that's what I'm looking for in this channel is to give you some good ideas and to help everybody out. So once again, my name is Charles. This is Survival Preparedness for Beginners, and until next time, I'll catch you all on the flip side.